Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. So after years of planning, we had finally arrived in the Marquesas Islands in French Polynesia, after sailing 2,855 nautical miles from Mexico. So far, the islands had lived up to every expectation, as we were absolutely blown away by the beauty and wilderness of the South Pacific Islands. Stay tuned as the crew go get little mementos from our Pacific crossing before we welcome two new members to the Parlay family. So I'm Colin, and this is the crew of Parlay Revival. From hurricane damaged, to broken bulkheads, and getting struck by lightning not once but twice, to being the strongest and fastest Lagoon 450 on the planet. We are now sailing 5,000 miles from Mexico to New Zealand, my home, before continuing our circumnavigation. So subscribe to follow our journey around this beautiful planet. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? This week's adventure starts in Tahuata, a small island just to the south of Iwaoa in the Marquesas Islands. It's the kind of place that you don't really imagine visiting unless you are on a sailboat. We found a nice little bay to ourselves and were surrounded by tall hills and the ocean around us seemed to be wild and so alive. What a beautiful morning. We've woken up in paradise again. Everyone's gone hunting for lobsters. I see Jamie coming back now. Let's see what he's got. I don't see anything in the goodie bag on the... <laughs> he's been promising us lobster rolls for lunch. Can't wait to hear the excuse. No that's wild, man. It's so pretty though. Like Two that's... sharks, a big manta. You saw a manta ray? Yeah, yeah a big, big one. one. Did you film it? Yeah. How big? Oh, I don't know. We'll have a look at the footage. Probably two, two, well, over two meters wide. And Jamie was not exaggerating. The ocean here just hits a little different than most of the other places we'd been to. We were well and truly witnessing the wild Pacific in all her glory. Okay, so this is only our second time ever trying this, so we're still absolute beginners. Um, we've only got about 10 knots, but it should pick up through the morning. Um, so because of that, I thought we'd pump up the 7 meter kites, and we're still going to just keep trying it with the paddle boards. Just get the feel of the uh, wing. I'm not sure that this is what they recommend doing, but it just makes sense to me. <laughs> and the, they've pumped it up inside the cockpit here, and now we can't get it out, so we'll have to deflate it, get it out, and pump it up again. What was that, like five minutes to set up, and we're ready to go. Right now, there's zero knots of wind. Typical. We were all off to a good start, slowly getting the hang of the feeling of flying the wing. The concept is exactly the same as sailing, and what we were doing here is sailing dead downwind because the paddleboard was too hard to manoeuvre. Yeah, I think I'm ready for the next step. So the next step was to assemble the foil board, which is a board with a mast and a hydrofoil beneath it. The idea of the foil is to get the whole board out of the water so that there is hardly any friction, enabling the small wing to have enough force to propel the rider forward. But getting up on the foil is a lot easier said than done. What style are you going for? The shaggy. She just sound wild with those scissors. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't worry. I just watched the YouTube video like five minutes ago. Lucky we're not going to be we're pretty remote at the moment. We're not going to see many people, so no one will notice. No, 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 you were back. You, you said you were ready until you saw the scissors. I saw the way you're doing this. I've never <laughs> seen anybody's hair cut that way before. Yeah, I'll pass on the shag look. The bow cut. No, oh, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a straight up bowl. <laughs> I can't see it. I don't know. Holy you don't want it. Hey, hey, I thought it looked good. Why'd you give him bangs? I told you it's about the uh, location, not the style. What? Well, I thought it looked good. Okay, let me just work on the front. It, it look it doesn't look like a bow cut. Look at the layers. It's got layers. It's got layers and highlights. No matter what it did, you guys are gonna say so. Okay, the back looks alright. Yeah. But the front <laughs> well, I don't have much short call it Leave a comment below if you think it's ten out of ten. 
Well, even if you don't think it's 10 out of 10, feel free to leave Jamie a comment as I know he reads them all. Anyway, we were having an absolute blast being in the Marquesas Islands and it felt like all of the hard work we had put into getting Parlay into ship shape had finally paid off. This had been a dream of mine for many, many years and to be enjoying it like this was pretty special to me and we just couldn't get enough of it. We decided to go for a hike, which started off with investigating an abandoned house just above the beach. Great view. Colleen, you're the guinea pig. <laughs> hey, <you're hot. laughs> Definitely looks like a challenge. A bunch of sheep or cows or horses or something right there. But I think if we make it to there, we might be able to see Parlay. You boys ready? It's a lot further than I thought. Okay, it's getting steep now. But the good news is we're almost at the top of the ridge. Just don't look back because you'll be disappointed of how far we actually came. The hill was deceptively steep, but once we got to the top, the views were absolutely breathtaking. That was a lot steeper than it looked. The house is way down there. Oh, it's not my face. Trying to cool Jamie down at the boat. Take a shot of us, because we are far up here. Watch this. Boys picks up. Can you see us? <laughs> yeah, we're up really? here. We Woo! did it. We need some more water, though. <laughs> Can you tell Jamie to bring some water? <laughs> Maybe a couple beers? Oh no, yeah. it was steep. It was, we saw. It was it just as steep. Up. The dogs are thirsty. The dogs drank all that water. We're dying. Oh my God. It was my idea to keep going up. And I'm dying. But I can't let them know. They said this was a silly idea. And it was. We've run out of water. Probably a good hour and a half from the boat. But it's just unbelievable up here. So we've officially split up, girls have gone a different way. I literally couldn't get enough of these views. Oh wow, oh wow. I decided to carry on around the entire ridge while the girls took a shortcut down the hill. It was steep and gnarly, but I was loving every second of it. We were completely out of water, and the sun was beating down on us relentlessly. But my sense of adventure was in full steam. But the shortcut the girls wanted to take may not have turned out as planned. So guys, we've been one hour climbing up this mountainside. Now we're completely lost. <laughs> Three girls, one dog, what could go wrong? I can see them finally. Luckily they got Lindo with them, because I've only got McFly. I feel like we're higher than when we started. Oh my god. We made it. Fly, we made it. We did it, buddy. We just walked around this entire bay. Man, the human need for water is incredible. I am dying right now. So thirsty. Water. The girls are way up on the hill, slowly making their way down. I was on cloud nine and I felt like some ancient explorer scaling the hills in remote Polynesia to discover new lands for my tribe's people. So naturally, I took all of my clothes off. There's something extremely liberating about being naked outdoors, especially in this day and age. It's not often that you're so remote there is literally zero chance of seeing another person out there, and I felt as free as a bird. So thirsty, but man, this was amazing. Just feel so wild and free out here. <sighs> Had to do the last part naked. <laughs> Just let it all out. Be completely free. Wow, that was one hell of a hike. The next morning we started sailing towards Nukuhiva, 
where we would be meeting our two new crew members. To break up the trip, we made an overnight stop with our new buddy boat from Australia, who we had met a few nights earlier. The next morning we picked up anchor and carried on our journey to Nukuheva. We thought we had hit the jackpot with a nice tuna, but the tax man had other ideas. We arrived at the next spot on Uwapo Island to take another breather, but I had a feeling it would be a rough night if I didn't put out a stern anchor, so this is what we did. Well, none of these guys have their stern anchors out, um, so if you are putting a stern anchor out, you have to think about where you are and how that's going to affect the whole anchorage. So our stern is the furthest towards the beach, so if we keep our stern there, everyone else can, everyone else can do 360s and we won't go near them. But if we were in the middle of the pack there and we put a stern anchor out, the guy behind us can swing into us when the wind shifts. So you can't just throw a stern anchor out when you're in a pack of boats like this, um, unless you're sure that they can do a full swing. We want to tie it so that it can't go slack and get under the sail drive and stuff if we start to go that way. It's going slack now as the wind's swinging. I'm gonna get it tighter. I'm gonna put the drone up and show you exactly why we put that stern anchor out. It is working exactly as planned. These monohulls are rolling around all over the place right now. They're all beam onto the wind and we are bowing and this is just working exactly how it's meant to. So don't be afraid to put a stern anchor out. It's a little bit of a rigmarole, but um, yeah, what a difference. The next morning when we went to leave, I threw the end of the stern anchor line into the ocean for Jamie to retrieve with the anchor, as he already had it in the dinghy. The only problem was that Jamie also untied the line at the anchor and threw that into the sea. He just threw our spare halyard into the ocean. So the whole line was sitting on the seabed. I'm gonna see if I can drag and pick it up. Wow, what an eventful day. Not even eight, what time is it? Not even eight o'clock. What's the probability of this working without getting in the water? Ah, uh, very sweet. See the bottom? <laughs> you got it, you got it? Yeah. A good old case of miscommunication, but we were just happy to have our spare halyard back. Eventful morning. Dumped the old halyard in the water. <laughs> Lost the snap shackle. Barely get their anchor up. We only had a short sail to do that day to Nukuhiva, our final stop in the Marquesas Islands. How cool is this? We're just in this big amphitheatre of a mountain range around. This is sick. This is the main town of all of the Marquesas. The biggest one anyway. What's it called? Nukuhiva. What's the town called? I don't know. It was made it, you know. With this ultra anchor, I'm not just saying this, it's it's never dragged and I just get more and more and more confidence in that anchor. That we can usually we're just getting more and more um, confident with where we anchor. Like we're really close to the beach there. But uh, we did a lap around there, it's 20 feet all around us. And I'm just really confident that the boat wouldn't drag onto that beach. Okay, today is the day. Good morning. We are headed over to get tattoos. Yeah, I'm so pumped. A little bit nervous. Not only am I going to get a tattoo, but I'm going to be videoed getting a tattoo. Yeah, so if you cry, we're yeah. going to see you. The whole world will see. I'm really nervous. <laughs> are you Daniel? Nice to meet you, Daniel. Nice to meet you. So Stephen, the chosen one McLeod, our longtime patron who was picked to sail across the Pacific with us, decided to get his first ever tattoo once we had crossed the equator and he became a shellback. Chosen has been against tattoos his entire life, which shows you how important it was for him to have a change of heart. It doesn't hurt. The back of my leg is gonna be on a parlay episode. I said the shading wasn't as bad as the outline. I think he was just drawing it on with the pen. Now it's a little bit more uncomfortable. The girls also got swallow tattoos, signifying having completed over 5,000 nautical miles at sea. So Daniel was just saying his mom's done all this amazing, beautiful art and he comes from a family of artisans. 
that symbol is called ipu and it means a container for life. Asian tattoo, the tattoo from the enana, the name of the tattoo it's called <clears throat> patu tiki. Patu means print and tiki it's one of, of our god, one of the most important. It's why we see tiki everywhere. But the name of the of our art it's patu tiki mean print tiki so a lot of symbols means the part of tiki to turtle it's not a symbol of tiki but if you put two turtles side to side you can see on the white part the symbol tiki yes and it's a man in every way way you look you can see a part of tiki what do you think, Steve? I think it looks good. I'm oh glad God. it's over. You may be wondering why we weren't getting Polynesian-style tattoos since we were here. Well, we just didn't feel like we had earned them yet and wanted to experience the culture some more. But it was nice to have a local artist leave his mark on the crew because it had been one hell of an adventure to get here. Chapman girl. We are planning a road, road trip. trip. Where? Road trip. To the airport. Why? To pick up my best friend in the whole entire world. Oh, I'll be out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking up my best friend Brady. I met her when I was five. My mom paid me a quarter to go meet her. A quarter? Yeah. <laughs> what? 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 Yeah, I was like, my mom was reading her magazine on the beach. And I was like bothering her to play with me and my mom was like, if you go over and play with that girl, I'll give you a quarter. And so I was like, okay. And we've been best friends ever since. That's amazing. <laughs> Who's driving? All of us. All of us. Oh shit. Can you all drive stick? Is it stick? Yeah. yeah. Nope. You guys are driving. <laughs> Katie and I. <laughs> Can you all drive a $50,000 Hilux? <laughs> I can drive a $2 million yacht. Ooh. Oh. Right, it's happening. Three girls are getting into a car. Three girls, one car. <laughs> Wait, we're drive on the right here, right? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Let's hope so. Slow down, mama. Why you talk so mean? Good Lord, man, shit. It ain't what it's saying. You got a nice clothes, a really nice show. Boogie down at the bar. Fiddle tunes. But it always goes too far. Shoot him, pull, crack a jack, take off now, and don't look back. But hey, don't you want to play? Like, I can't believe this is actually happening. I'm originally from Philadelphia, but I live in New York City. Colleen is my best friend of like over 20 years at this point. I think we've been best friends since we were like six. So I'm just really excited to do this kind of trip with her. I've never sailed. <laughs> I think the longest I've been on a boat is like maybe an hour top. So it's all a little brand new to me. Really like living in New York City, everything's just so like fast paced and you just always got one place to go from here to there all the time. And I'm excited to kind of just reset, you know, just kind of like go with the flow. So Kiki wasn't flying in until later that day, so that gave the boys their own opportunity to go exploring in the Hilux. The roads were so steep and windy and the views from some of the lookouts were absolutely amazing. Yeah, we're nearly at the airport in Nukaheva. Uh, we're going to pick up another crew, Kiki. She's a Patreon. Good to see ya. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I am Kiki Stengel and I am from Northport, Florida. I've been wanting to come to Tahiti, the French Polynesia, for over 30 years. And never in my wildest dreams did I imagine it would be on Barlet or any sailboat like this. I don't have the words to describe my gratitude for this experience. To end off an already pretty awesome day, our good friends on SV Dallas pulled up next to us, who we hadn't seen since we were in Costa Rica. We were so excited to catch up and share stories of our adventures across the Pacific.
The conversation soon turned into discussing our third race together, as we were currently sitting at one apiece. As we were both about to head to the Tuamotu Islands, Brian and I decided we could do a deciding race there to see who the Blue Water Champion would be. So stay tuned for next week as we battle it out, Catamaran vs Monohull, on a gruelling 450 mile open ocean race to the Tuamotu Islands. See you next Sunday guys.